Welcome to another episode of Lunch with the Shark. Join us as we dive deep into discussions about business, accounting, and finance to help you build a business that thrives. Now sit back and have a bite with your host, the Shark CFO, Vidal Espinosa. Well, hello, hello, good afternoon, and welcome to a new edition of Lunch with the Shark. I am your host, Vidal, the Shark CFO Espinosa, and we are actually back in San Diego. And um, it's great seeing you today. We are, well, actually, we are not in San Diego, per se. We are really close to San Diego. We are actually in uh, Real del Mar, close, well, not close, uh, right by the beach. We have an amazing ocean view here at my brother's um, condominium. As you guys know, we are homeless at least for four or five weeks. I hope um, Hernan and um, and the other real estate agent uh, get us the house that we are looking and that uh, and that we we can move in really soon, right? That's that's our wish and our hope for for the new years. So let's let's actually dive right into the topic uh, for this week, which is tax planning. And uh, yesterday we spoke about uh, the the basics of tax planning. We spoke what was tax planning, tax avoidance, and tax evasion. And we gave you four four nuggets as to uh, some of the tax planning strategies. Right. So today today we're going to talk and give you ten tips on how to reduce. Yes. 10 tips on how to reduce uh, your taxable income when you are a small business. There are tons of different ways you have to pay. Well, uh, there's a ton of different taxes, sorry, uh, that you have to pay when you are in business. A lot of the time, businesses, business owners don't know what type of taxes you need to pay. Uh, you need to pay sales tax. You need to pay payroll taxes, you need to pay, uh, oh, sorry, no, 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 I'm reading you what, what it's, what, uh, I, I thought that today was Wednesday. Well, no, we're going to teach you how to reduce your taxable income base, and I said that. Sorry, we are live here, so um, pardon. Uh, so uh, for most business owners, writing a prepayment check to the IRS, it's not fun. We actually have a client that has to write a prepayment check every three months that uh, it's over $30,000. And it hurts, it hurts. Uh, but, but uh, that's another story, right? So uh, what if you can't write a small, what if you can write a smaller check to the IRS instead of 30, 40, 50, 60 thousand dollars? Uh, you write a $500, $1,000 check every three months to the IRS as prepayment. So let's go into 10 tips on how to reduce taxable income for your business. Okay. Uh, so small business taxes can be confusing and a small business owner like you have several questions. How much do I pay? Why do I have to pay this amount? Can I reduce taxable income? Really, no tax, no business owners will co has come to me and said, "Oh, I want to reduce my taxable income." They have no idea what taxable income is. They just know that they have to pay taxes, but they really they don't care how the formula works. They don't care on pluses and minus to reduce it, adjust it, and things like that. They don't. They just care about the bottom line. They just care about the um, the um, the outcome. Like, oh, uh, Vidal, why am I going to have to write a check for $30,000? Well, we explained to you three quarters ago. If you implement this and this, oh, yeah, but Google tells me. Well, Google knows more than we do, then hire Google, right? 
So understanding how to reduce taxable income legitimately, legitimately, so that means legally, and avoid pitfalls, it's important and can have great return. We are talking about tax planning. Everything boils down to the tax planning that you've done for a long term. Remember, you need to adjust accordingly. And as we said yesterday, we're going to have to adjust based on the new tax reform that uh, Joe Biden is going to impose on the, US, on the US population. Yes, he's going to impose as every other president does and they send their recommendations or what they want and it has to go through Congress and the Senate. So the House and the Senate. So unfortunately, many business owners overpay on their taxes, yes. And why? Because their CPA, CPA, like really CPA, uh, they don't know everything, okay? They miss out on certain deductions or managing their business businesses and retirement savings account. They don't utilize uh, uh, tax credits. Uh, uh, they're not efficient. Uh, they don't have books. They don't have accounting. They use their bank statement as their books. And how do we classify that? Uh, everything when it comes to accounting, accounting it's an art, okay? Even on the definition of accounting, we have the word art, it's an art, right? So you need to know how to classify to maximize your deductions. If, uh, uh, if you hire an accountant or bookkeeper that is charging you $5 an hour, I just lately, I heard from a consultant to one of our clients, let's hire an accountant in India. I have nothing against them. They're gonna hire you $5 an hour. Hernan, thank you for having, thank you, thank you. We, we are we are hoping you do your best. Uh, <laughs> no pressure. Uh, so if I have nothing against accountants or bookkeeper from India to outsource them. But what is it? What's an accountant bookkeeper from India that is charging you five dollars an hour? How like how can you? I don't know. I. I, I I, it's my personal belief that I, how can I expect something something good from from them? Like maybe it's good for data entry, and then I, we have to go over them, and that's pretty much sometimes what we do. We go over the data entry, and we reclassify eighty percent of their work. So it's much better that somebody that knows how to classify does that. So every tax planning starts from two things your structure your entity structure and we've spoken about that this individual sole proprietor uh corporations llc's partnership trusts and uh it starts from there right and then good set of books good set of books so let's start by keeping number one okay there are many complexities to deal with when trying to minimize your tax bill. But with the right strategy, you can save money on taxes while making your life easier during tax season, okay? Tax season, it's not the deadline. Tax season is not April 15th for you individual, okay? And now corporations. Tax season, it's not there. Tax season is a whole year, okay? So here are 10 tips to reduce taxable income for your small business. First of all, keep an eye on your adjusted gross income. What the hell? It's adjusted gross income. Adjusted gross income is a measure of income calculated from your gross income, okay? And it's used to determine how much of your income it's taxable. Okay, your deposits, your deposits are not your adjusted gross income. Okay, so if you're using your bank statement, wrong, okay? Don't use your bank statements. 
many tax breaks, limitations, and additional tax tees off from your adjusted gross income or modify adjusted gross income. For example, you'll avoid the 0.9% additional Medicare tax on earned income if your adjusted gross income does not exceed $200,000 if you're filing single or $250,000 if you're filing married filing jointly, okay? That's a tip there. But only if you know your adjusted gross income, you can do that. Number two, reimbursing using an accountable plan. How many of you, small business owners, and this, this affects you directly on your personal tax return, have fully executed, have on their documents an approved uh, 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 accountable plan. How many of you? I can tell you that at least 100% of our clients and former clients have an accountable plan fully executed from the day that they have established their corporation or LLC. Yes. And what is an accountable plan? An accountable plan, it's something that it's actually uh, uh, on the tax code. The U.S. tax code is roughly 70,000 pages long. 70,000 pages long. Okay? So it's, it's right in there. It's not a loophole. It's actually uh, um, guidance from the tax authorities saying, hey, issue an accountable plan so you can reimburse your shareholders, your business owners, your employees. Otherwise, any check written to them could be considered distributions, dividends, or salary. If the IRS or the state considers those as either distributions, dividends, salary, you are in for a big tax bill. Yes. If you issue a, a, an accountable plan, you have to have it in writing. They must be certain guidelines that you must follow. Then any reimbursement could never be considered a salary distribution or dividends to your shareholders or employees. Number three, make smart tax elections. Listen, if you are a sole proprietor, just by creating a, an LLC, okay, and having that LLC taxed as an S corporation, it's going to save you 15.3% in taxes. Call us so we can tell you how. Everything falls from the election that you do, whether from your entity structure and then the way it's going to be taxed. Remember, S corporation, it's not an entity. It's the way that you elect to be taxed, okay? It's the way that you want to be taxed. And you have to request that in writing to the IRS. Don't overlook carry off overs. Wow. Certain deductions and credits have limitations that can prevent you from using them fully in the current year, but could permit a carryover to future years and carry back, carry over are a way to reduce taxable income. Mm -hmm. You can actually carry back two years, your current year losses and adjust your two previous year taxes. We've actually done that and clients have gotten refunds. Clients have gotten certain tax liabilities adjust it yep but you must be really really focused on those 
carryovers. Remember that word, carryovers. Use number five, use tax free ways to extract income. Okay, I'm not telling you to take money from your business however you please. Okay, there's ways you can do it, there's legal ways you can do it. Salary, bonuses, and distributions of your share of business profit or ta are taxable. Okay, remember, salary, bonus, and distributions are taxable. However, there are ways in which you can possibly benefit from your business success without triggering taxes to you. Tax-free fringe benefits. Tax-free fringe benefits. Medical coverage, health insurance accounts, retirement plans, life insurance up to $50,000, Loans by the business to you on a no or low uh, interest basis. If the loan interest is below the IRS rate, then that can be considered a distribution. But the business can lend you money as long as you pay twice a year with a considerable and reasonable interest rate. That it is. But you have to write the agreement prior to that loan distribution because there's cases where the IRS has even gone as far as getting a polygraph and asking at that date that that agreement was executed. Executed means signed. And most of the times it's signed after the distribution is given and after they receive that notice for an audit that's not a good word audit number six consider abandoning versus selling property if the property has no value to the business talk to us or your accountant about the benefits of abandoning it rather than selling it for a nominal amount this could allow the business to take an ordinary loss on the property which is fully fully deductible, rather than treating the loss as a capital loss, which is subject to limitations. If you know the tax law, if you know the tax code, there's a lot of things you can do legally. There's Those are not loopholes. So instead of selling the property that has no longer value on your books, oh, do you have a balance sheet? Is your balance sheet accurate? Because if you have a property that it's worth $100,000, but it's fully depreciated, that means that we have $100,000 in depreciation for that property, that property has a zero value in your books. And you sell it for uh, $20,000. That's profit. Because you already spend through depreciation the value of the property. So you're going to pay taxes on $20,000. You can actually donate it, abandon it. There's a lot of ways to do it. Number seven, and we said this, use French benefit employee, uh, but again, it must be in writing. So we must have a benefit, a, a, a French employee benefit plan. Additional wages trigger employment tax, and not only for you, but for your employee. So generally, when you are giving them a raise, it does not translate dollar to dollar because that increases their taxable base. They're getting more tax withholdings when it comes to uh, uh, personal income tax, either state and federal, and also increases the Social Security and Medicare and state taxes for them. So ultimately, their cash flow, it's not equal to the amount of the rates. So instead of that, consider giving them fringe benefits, okay, that ultimately are going to be better when it comes to cash flow. Maybe not cash flow per se, but but also they can give them better uh, 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 way of life, right? 
So additionally, uh, but if you if the business pays for certain fringe benefits for employees, this taxes can be avoided, avoided tax exempt benefits. You can consider offering your employees include employer sponsored health insurance, long term care insurance, group term life insurance up to fifty thousand dollars, disability insurance educational assistance, dependent care assistant, transportation benefits, meals provided by employee conveniences. There's tons of French benefits that are tax exempt, but everything has to be in writing. You must have a employee benefit plan or a cafeteria plan. It's so funny because one of our clients it's offering all this. And I said, hey, can you send me your cafeteria plan? They're like, oh, we don't offer meals to our employees. Uh, who's handling your HR department? I am. Uh, and you don't know about the cafeteria plan? We don't have, we don't offer meals to our employees. Cafeteria plan, it's actually this. Your employee benefit plan, it's there, okay? So if you have employees, and you offer this, it has to be in writing. Number eight, shelter profits in retirement plans. It's actually quite easy to set up a simple small business retirement plan for your employees. An employee sponsored 401k or a similar tax deferred retirement plan will allow employees to make tax deductible contributions to save for their future. With a tax deferred retirement plan like a 401k or traditional IRA, the employee doesn't pay taxes currently on contributions to retirement plans. Instead, their retirement savings fund grow on a tax deferred basis. This is a keyword, tax deferred basis. This means distributions are taxable when taken in the future, when the employee may be at a lower tax bracket. So when you retire, you can actually withdraw from that account and you're going to pay the taxes then. Actually, yes, on that tax rate, but maybe you're not making as much as you were making right now. So your tax bracket, it's going to be lower, first of all. And second, you're postponing the taxes that you're going to be paying. Okay. There are several retirement plan choices. The one to use depends on your situation. Remember that if you have that it's if you have employees, the business must cover them on a non-discriminatory basis. Owners and management cannot be favored. Remember, non-discriminatory basis. Oh, uh, my wife and my kids are going to be 75% uh, and employees are gonna be 10%. Yeah, no, non-discriminatory, okay? But a plan such as a 401k shifts most or all of the cost of saving to employees while giving them choice and flexibility in planning for retirement. Number nine, do year and planning and i think that we have uh next week or the following we're gonna do a how do we do a year end tax planning for the current no year end uh planning and also strategic strategical planning for future years so most of us don't even have an idea how do i plan for next year you don't have numbers. Remember, fuck your numbers, right? We don't have numbers. How are we gonna plan for next year's? How are we gonna do, what are we gonna do for 2021? Oh, I just wanna grow. By how much? So I think it's next week or the following that we're gonna cover do uh, uh, your year end planning and uh, strategic planning for, for next year's. So while tax planning is a year-round activity, as I told you, you can achieve dramatic savings by taking action at the end of the year. There are several strategies that can help you lower your taxable income just before the end of the year. Here's a couple. 
delay billing for unpaid work until payment is received. Remember, for this purpose, you must be on an accrual basis, okay? Accrual basis, that's the keyword. So this means that if you have not invoiced your current clients, hold on to invoice them until 2021. We're in 2020, period. Purchase fixed assets and claim immediate depreciation. We spoke about this. Accelerated depreciation, 179, all the years or most of the years Congress allows this. Meaning that if they fall under certain criteria and you check mark all those boxes, you can actually generate an accelerated depreciation of almost 100%. Yep, so that's really good. Number three, write off bad debts. Oh, but um, uh, I don't know who owes me. Well, do you have numbers? Whomever owes you, and it's been there for one, two, for three, four, five, six, seven, eight months, you can actually write them off. You cannot write off whatever you did not sell. <laughs> I, it's so funny. I, I have to address this because whatever you don't sell, it's not considered income. Right? So you cannot be invoicing for people or proposals that you send and you don't close. It has have to have actually had happened. Right? If you have delivered a service and you invoice and they don't pay you, that's actually considered a non collectible uh, 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 invoice. So that's a bad debt. Right? So you can, you can actually write it up. You must show in an audit that you made every single attempt to collect that debt. Not just send the invoice, forget it. And set it and forget it and, oh, well, they didn't pay me. Okay, but I'm gonna write it off. It doesn't work like that either. There's procedures, there's certain things that you must follow, okay? So if you know your account's receivable, which is what you invoice, okay, uh, then you, um, you're you going to have to Follow a procedure and write them off. That's actually a way to reducing your taxable base. File and submit your taxes on time. What does that mean? Filing and submitting your taxes, uh, your taxes uh, on time. Well, it means that taxes must be paid on or before the due date. Oh, but we have an extension. Yes, we have an extension to present the tax return, to actually submit the paperwork for the tax return, okay? So you must file and present and pay your taxes on time. This avoids uh, penalties and interest. It's so funny because I was dealing with the state of California a couple of weeks ago and they're like, well, you you need to pay interest because California borrows the taxes that you don't pay. Uh, I understand, and that's that's fine. And they're like, well, uh, 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 and also you need to understand this lady was trying to lecture me, and I was doing this for a client, and I'm like, dude, come on, please, uh, don't lecture me, like, right, like. There's, there's certain things that I can control. And number 10, restructure your business. What is that? Well, restructuring your business is analyzing your current business and tweaking it. And I already gave you this nugget. If you're a sole proprietor, you might be saving taxes if we create you a new tax uh, uh, entity, a new business structure, corporation, LLC, partnership, because you can save a lot of taxes. That's simple, right? So it's not complicated. It's not easy either. This is not a do-it-yourself project like painting 
uh, um, your house, which might not be that easy if you have a huge house. Uh, but nevertheless, this is really, this is nothing to be done by yourself. This is something that you have to do if you um, have a business, you must budget for some tax planning. Uh, it's going to help you for the long term, right? When it comes to how to save taxes, you can reduce the amount of taxes you pay if you take advantage of breaks and opportunities that are out there. It is up to you and your tax advisor to discover new ways to lower taxes for your small business, okay? And this is very important this year, following year, and any year that you're in business. Follow us on Instagram. We have special chingaderas there <laughs> uh, on Instagram, and uh, it's fun. We have different things all over our social media. Facebook, Instagram, YouTube, LinkedIn, Spotify. I don't know what else. I think uh, Ana Sofia was going to create for us uh, TikTok. Uh, I don't know what we're going to do there, but uh, I am not going to for sure dance there. Uh, so to end up today's show, we are going to again quote, not for me, it's my belief, uh, the best president in the whole wide world, Ronald Reagan. And he said, government's view of the economy could be summed up in a few short phrases. If it moves, tax it. If it keeps moving, regulate it. And if it stops moving, subsidize it. Damn. Government's view of the economy could be summed up in a few short phrases. If it moves, tax it. If it keeps moving, regulate it. Regulate it. And if it stops moving, subsidize it. Well, it's been great seeing you. I hope you have a amazing Tuesday. Bon appetit. Ciao. Thank you for listening to Lunch with the Shark. If you would like to set up a consultation with the Shark CFO, Vidal Espinosa, visit his website www.invictus-advisors.com and don't forget to subscribe on Facebook, Instagram, YouTube, Twitter and LinkedIn.